Art went and travel was traveling west from Paso Robos on the uh, 46, and we went to a vineyard there called La Vista Vineyard. Now, they grow a lot of grapes, and they grow these grapes exclusively for different wineries that need to have additional types of grapes than the ones that they may grow. Not only is it important for a vineyard to have a great relationship with nature, it's nice when people cooperate with each other. Now here we're going to get a chance to listen directly from a man who has been growing grapes for 40 years. And he brought his experience to the table with the owner of La Vista Vineyards to create a great partnership of people that produce the best grapes they could possibly grow. Okay, well I'm Ken Riding. I'm the, the owner of La Vista Vineyards. Uh, the vineyard is now about uh, six years old, or at least we're in our sixth leaf, and uh, we're producing seven different varietals. We produce Grenache, Syrah, Morved, Zinfandel, and Malbec in red varietals, and then Grenache Blanc and Viognier in the white varietals. Uh, we do not make wine. We grow the grapes and sell them to the local wineries and we sell them to some other wineries as far away as San Francisco and even Arizona to one of the uh, wineries in Arizona. Uh, the, we're standing right now in the Grenache uh, vineyard and you can see that uh, the crop is coming along very well. It's right now uh, July 11th and uh, we probably won't be harvesting this for about two more months uh, with the way weather is going right now. Beside me here is uh, my friend and, uh, and vineyard manager Alvaro Medrano. Alvaro has been in the grape growing business in the Paso Robles and uh, uh, Central Coast area for gosh 40 years now and uh, knows he's forgot more than I'll ever know. Uh, I depend on him an awful lot. The Grenache has some idiosyncrasies in that it, if it gets too much sun, it uh, kind of gets bleached, and that means that it loses some of its color from the uh, standpoint of good red wine. I'm gonna let Alvaro talk a little bit about what he does to, to uh, prevent that from happening. Yeah, what we do here to avoid the, uh, the problem of getting, uh, you know, white uh, color on these uh, red uh, grapes is um, we do remove leaves early in the season when the berries are pretty small, basically right after set. And then um, we remove some of the leaves to, so we can get some more um, sunlight early. Um, and then um, by this time of the year, we just did another pass that last week, removing some more leaves to get more uh, sunlight on the clusters. So what we do later is just uh, lower the wires to to make like a little umbrella, you know, on the on the uh, on the clusters. So because pretty soon we're gonna have you know variation and it's gonna change color, and that's where we don't want um, the sun to hit. The clusters, so, but, um, pretty much, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, and uh, we don't want this uh, these clusters to turn uh, white, like bleach, you know, the skin or the uh, berries. That's why we're doing. This. Last year we got um, uh, frost damage um, in this area. Um, we never got frost on the top of the hill where we are right now, from the bottom. And uh, last year, we got hit over here on the, on the top. And it was uh, something that never happened. I haven't seen it before. Um, what, what we do after, um, after the frost damage, we irrigate a lot. So we encourage the, uh, the vines to grow back faster. And, um, and help to develop you know, whatever cluster was there or cluster was developing in the vines because we cut the frost 
orderly on this season. Um, but um, like you say, we don't have the big of the problem here with uh, frost. Then we usually don't irrigate very often. We do irrigate maybe um, uh, maybe three times a year. Depends on the weather, or depends on the on the you know. We got a lot of rain last year or this year. Then we don't irrigate much. If we don't have a lot of lot of rain, then we have to irrigate a little bit more. But we got you know half a gallon a meter. If we irrigate for ten hours, it's only five gallons per bind. So if we irrigate three times, it's only fifteen gallons on the whole season. So I think it's because you know the the type of the soil we got here, it doesn't require a lot of water. Well, here here at uh, La Vista we have uh, a very calcareous soil. Uh, we have about 10 or 12 inches of topsoil, and then we have uh, stones, and then more soil, and then stones, and uh, it's the kind of ground that uh, that holds the water when it gets in there. Uh, we have three wells on the property uh, that produce a total of about 70 gallons a minute, which is ample for us uh, year-round to uh, to manage the vineyard with, uh, with water supply. We only grow grapes, as I said earlier, and we sell to the local wineries. We sell to people like uh, Tablas Creek, Poso Libre, uh, Ranchero Cellars, uh, Napoma Wine Group, uh, Carhart uh, Winery down in San Inez, uh, and a number of other people uh, that are all local. They come to us primarily because they don't have sufficient supply in, uh, in the areas where they're growing the grapes or they don't have the varietals uh, that they want to, they want to uh, make into wine. So they purchase from us and they generally purchase uh, most of the grapes for blending purposes like a Malbec. We, we have a, just a small block of Malbec, but uh, most of the people who do uh, a Cabernet would like to have a little Malbec in it, so they purchase a little the the Malbec from us. Uh, same thing with uh, the the white varietals; those are basically made into Rhone blends uh, with the Grenache Blanc and the and the Viognier, and uh, occasionally they'll blend that with a Marsan or Rosan, which we don't grow, but they get someplace else. Uh, this time of the year, middle of July, we're just about all sold out with all of our grapes. And uh, we're very, very happy. Uh, the, the wine business right now is, is pretty strong and, uh, and the grape business is pretty strong. But we, we continue to strive to supply good quality grapes uh, to all of the wineries. And we're very anxious to be able to taste the, the wine that they're making from our grapes. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, couple of wineries that do vineyard designation, uh, Nicora Wines and uh, uh, Ranchero Cellars. Uh, Tablas Creek has in the past, uh, so we're happy with that, and we're very very proud of the fact that uh, they're willing to to indicate where they got their grapes. <laughs>